This short demonstration will show you the functionality of the new St. Cobain Jiproc add-in for Autodesk Revit. For more information about this add-in, please check out the St. Cobain website or the CAD Corporation website. Once you've created your, your layout of the placement of your walls in your view, um, you would need to then go and create a duplicated view. And this is just a method of identifying which walls has been quantified in the view. So I'm going to go and duplicate this particular view here. And I'm just going to say duplicate. I don't need to duplicate with detailing. And I'm going to rename that level to, let's say, chip rock quantification. Once we've created the new view called the JIPROC quantification, we're ready to start the quantification process. The next step would be to make a selection of the walls that you would like to quantify in this instance. Please note that we only quantify the same type of wall systems to get an accurate reading of the quantification required. So the first step I'm going to do is I'm going to do a selection of walls. So I'm going to select one of the instances over there. I'm going to say let's select all instances visible in view. Important in this part as well is we need to include the doors that is going to be in the in the partitioned uh, walls as well. So just keeping in the control key, I can go and click on the elements that needs to be part of this particular selection set. Once I've created the selection set, I can then go to the St. Cobain JIPROC tab and start the JIPROC material calculation application. Once I've opened up the application, I need to validate the walls. Once the walls are validated, okay, the next thing we're going to do is we then move into the ultra steel track. On this tab, the user needs to input the number of splices and needs to input the meters per length for the number of splices. The next step would be to add in the ultra steel studs. So in this particular tab, there's quite a few things that is happening. Um, the only user input required on this tab is going to be the stud centers and saying what the stud center length should be or what the studs um, length should be. So in this example here, I'm going to change that to 4.2 because the wall height or the height of these partitions is going to be set at 4 meters. Note the parameters at the bottom is already filled in for you. So the software or the application automatically go and calculates the number of corners, T-junctions, uh, wall starts and door frames based on the selection that you have made. So in the view, you will notice that it's picking up the corners over here. That's a corner, there's a corner, there's another corner, and that one over there. And that is obviously multiplied um, through the floor plan that I have here. Number of T-junctions would be six. So I'm, that would be one, two, three, four, five, six. All right. Um, number of wall starters would be the wall starters that you see over there would be one. That would be two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And again, multiplied over the floor plan. And then finally, we have got the number of door frames, which is set to two. And the number of door frames that we have in here is one and two. And if we look at that, that is the 12 doors that we see within the floor plan once again. The fourth step in this application is to specify the JIPROC plasterboard that is going to be used. Firstly, the user once again needs to input the board length required for this particular design. And again, I'm going to set the board length to 4.2 as we have got a um, the wall height at about 4 meters. The number of boards required either side is automatically picked up from the wall type name in um, the select walls tab. Furthermore, it also picks up the board type from that name as well, meaning that it's a classic board type and they're from the drop down list by default classic is selected for the user. Finally, we also got fixings and plasters. The fixings and plasters tab allows you to, to select the type of Rhinolite 
to be used, the type of skirting to be used, and also the number of dry streaker screws that is required for installation. Now you will notice that some of these checkboxes is ticked off by default, and they are ticked off by default based on selections that once again are made within the software. So what we have in this instance here is that because this is a single number of board required either side, our 25 millimeter drywall streaker screws has been selected by default. If we have a three-layered uh, board system or a three uh, or a two-layered board system, you will notice that the soft the application will automatically go and make a selection for um, either the 42 millimeter drywall streaker screws or the 60 millimeter drywall streaker screws. Finally, we've got 45 millimeter skirting screws selected by default and also the Rhino tape 45 millimeter rolls selected by default. So. Once the user has specified the type of Rhino light we would like to use um, between or it's either or between Rhino light and Rhino glide, and then the same with um, the flat skirting and rib skirting. Okay, so once the user has specified what the selections or selections that has been made, you are now ready to actually quantify the components. So once you've Confirm that you've made the selections selections in the view you can quantify and if the quantification is done completed You will notice now that the estimated quantities is now being filled in now to ensure that you do not Duplicate the quantification in a in a floor plan um, We've added in a tab where we can actually go and place the tags and once we hit the place tags command It will go and place down a tag on each segment of wall that has been quantified okay so this is just a method of making sure that you do not quantify or duplicate quantifying the same wall system so if I once completed the tagging I can then go and export the information um, into a spreadsheet and I'm going to export this information and naming the export is going to be a, a bit crucial as well because um, you need to identify the level that you're working on and you also need to identify which system has been quantified in this particular view so i've come up a method of of identifying which systems has been quantified and what excel spreadsheets is going to going going to go along with that quantification i'm going to export the information and i'm going to call this level one dash pc02 All right and i'll just save it on my desktop okay so level one zero pc2 once the co components is quantified you can actually close the application because now that information is going to be um, taken out of the or placed in the excel spreadsheet and this particular spreadsheet here now just indicates to me the quantities that has been quantified. To carry on with the next system, I can now go and select the next type of wall. So here I, for example, have this particular wall and I can go and right click, select the visible walls of, of walls in view. And I can go in through the so same process, validating the walls and specifying um, the number of splices required once again. Um, so let's just say, for example, sake, it's 25 um, splices required. And we need to specify the, the stud centers. Again, notice there that those values there, which is the number of corners and number of wall starters, is automatically uh, picked up from the selections that are made. Um, notice that the board type has changed now. And you'll also notice that the number of boards required is two boards on either side. Once we've created and selected the various um, applications for this particular um, wall system, I can quantify the wall system once again. And now you can see that I have um, the estimated quantities for the construction of that particular system. Once I've done the wall quantification, best practice here is just to place the tags in the view um, and once the view the tags has been placed within the view you can then export that information once again um, so 
um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to export that information and say that is level one and that is a PF01 for partition uh, fire stop um, type one. Um, place that in the view. And again, if I want to go and view that information, I can click open PF101. And there I have all the information once again for this particular um, system. And that concludes the demonstration for this application called the St. Cobain Chiprock Material Calculation App.